All right. Thanks everyone for joining the Marketing All Hands. Let's go over metrics for the week. Seeing a little weirdness here on Friday. Yeah, I think that's just the long weekend. Uh, hey Jay, can you go ahead and investigate that and come up with a report by Friday? Thanks bro. Okay. What's up everyone? Today I want to go over some of the things that I wish I knew before I became a data scientist. And as you can see from the intro, there are a few undesirable situations in a career that's full of wondrous opportunities. Now let's go over three things that I wish I had known before I started in this field. The first thing I wish I knew was how much communication matters in data science. When I first started out in data science, I would actually work on projects because I was in a very self-directed environment. I was on a team with only three other engineers. Since it was such a small startup, we were all expected to work every single day pretty hard at progressing the company without a clear direction. And so for a lot of the projects, I kind of went on my own and decided to build cool new features that I felt would be useful for data science modeling scenarios. But when my team members would ask me about why I was building them, I didn't do a very good job of communicating the value that I was trying to bring, and therefore was switching around projects a lot. One of the issues I've noticed for many data scientists is that they fail to communicate their analyses well, or the projects that they're actually working on. It's kind of like that saying about if a tree falls in a forest, if you don't communicate your insight or your analysis really well, did you actually even do anything? Similarly, with a lot of the projects that that I first started on, when I actually wrote down what I was doing and what I intended to do in those data science projects, I realized there was a lot of edge cases that I was missing for why this should be the high priority item that I should work on. Basically writing down the, my project and what I expected out of it really helped me understand the exact scope of the project of what I wanted to do besides just jumping in there and just starting my analyses. So my advice for all new data scientists that are entering the field, take time to start out with a writing framework whenever you're communicating a lot of your insights. Some of the best praise that I got in my data science career was because I wrote up an analysis in a way that actually circled around to the entire company. Because if you think about it, even when you present analyses to your team, only your team members can see it. But if you write an email that goes out to your entire company, if assuming that it's generally a smallish kind of startup, then even the CEO or executives can go through and quickly skim what you're actually doing, assigning value to you as a person, being able to contribute to the business as a whole. The second thing I wish I knew before I became a data scientist was how difficult it is to find insights. When you first hear about the data science role, it's very exciting because of the fact that you feel kind of like a data detective at times. You're uncovering insights and you're exploring new discoveries through analyzing data. And that's extremely exciting. But as you join a company that is more mature, and I'm talking about around 50 plus employees, it becomes a lot harder and harder to find new ways to grow and find new insights that are actually ring true. For example, Facebook and Google and these kinds of companies all run thousands of A-B tests every single year just to find little increments of edges that they can exploit. So a lot of the growth team, for example, will run tons of these A-B tests just to get even a 0.05% conversion rate that's maybe statistically significant. But to even get to that level of impact, a lot of the times you'll notice that a lot of these experiments are gonna fail. And because a lot of your hypotheses that you previously had for running a test won't actually provide the lift that actually improves the entire system. By running more and more tests, your intuition does get better in terms of what will work in different kinds of causal systems in the future. So for example, if I'm working on the analytics team at YouTube and I wanna increase the rate of which people go on to watch the next video in a queue, then I'm gonna run thousands of different experiments to try to increase that rate by at least 1% because that 1% will cascade down the line towards thousands and thousands of hours of watch time for YouTube. But to be able to get that kind of impact, I have to run tons of experiments because YouTube is such a huge platform and has different kinds of audience members, different kinds of YouTube videos. And so providing some sort of incremental impact there is gonna be extremely complex with such a huge dynamic evolving platform. The best way to get there again is to just improve your intuition by continuously analyzing different kinds of insights and also building fundamental knowledge and principles for how the world works through continuous testing and continuous analysis in your field. The third thing I wish I knew before I became a data scientist was how much SQL monkey work there is. Now this doesn't really apply to more of the machine learning engineering or data engineering kind of roles, but specifically for data scientists 
statistics and data analytics, there's a lot of SQL monkey work out there. Specifically for that example that I illustrated in the beginning, a lot of the times executives or different team members might wanna know about why one number is going down or what why one number is going up or how to pull this data from this database or that data from another database. As a data scientist, you're essentially the data magician of the group. And so a lot of the times, other people on your team may not be as well versed with data. So you spend a lot of your own time actually supporting other people's work. For example, at my last company, I did a lot of work pulling data for marketing and sales teams so that they could increase their sales numbers or try to sell to existing customers. But because a lot of the non-technical team didn't know how to pull their own data, I was essentially the bottleneck for a lot of the other team to do a lot of work. And my job was generally pretty robotic in terms of they just asked for something and I would then provide it. The other common SQL monkey work is when data quality becomes an issue. When executives or different team members can't trust the validity of the data because there's two different sources that say diff two different things, then a lot of the time it's up for data scientists or data engineers to do the debugging to normalize that data across the board. And spoiler alert, that's not really fun at all. If it's just a small company, generally you can probably dig into the database and figure out the issue pretty quickly. But if it's a huge company with a huge data lake or data warehousing system, then it gets a lot harder to understand exactly where that data quality kind of failed. That's why the data science job can sometimes be pretty hectic because if revenue numbers start to fall or the revenue numbers don't match up with other revenue numbers that the finance team is providing, then you could see how data scientists could be pulled in to try to resolve the issue a lot of the time. And obviously there's the saying, don't f with the money. What ends up happening is that data scientists end up getting worn down by death from a thousand cuts. And this can be particularly tough to deal with. And there's not an easy way to climb out of the situation. A couple solutions are to talk with your manager to really set aside time for individual long-term projects. Another way is to provide more analytics tools so that non-technical people can kind of jump in there. And obviously the best but the hardest solution to implement is just to upgrade the data warehouse and data analytics infrastructure for everyone involved. All right, to recap, number one, communication matters so much. I never knew this before I became a data scientist. Number two is how difficult it is to find amazing insights. Don't expect to be, you know, Oprah with good news every single day that you're working on a company. Expect a lot of slog of not really interesting stuff with one spark of a really amazing insight. And number three, try to avoid as much SQL monkey work as you can. It's the equivalent of engineers just squashing bugs all day and not working on new features. For data scientists and data analysts, try not to be just complete SQL monkeys, build dashboards, upgrade infrastructure, do anything that you can so that the data ecosystem can work for all parties involved. If you guys have any other ideas on things that you wish you would have known before you jumped in to become a data scientist, please let me know in the comments. And again, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you all later.